to you, so he might be familiar with that. Okay, very also, good. Also, the Edge restaurant that's down in, in um, Sula, in Lafayette Square, okay. um, off of Jefferson, is very good. Anyway, okay. I don't want to, I don't, I just eat there, so I don't want to make promotions. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Tonight, it was a perfect night for me to call, because this bimbo who just called a few minutes ago talking about, oh, the gallery of the gallery of the gallery of, well, I am your client, your caller, that lived in one of the homes that was torn down by the gallery. Oh, yeah, you were in, yeah, across the street or something like that? Mm -hmm. No, no, I was living in actually that area. Oh, I see, okay. And then because I was forced out, I huh. moved across the street. Now oh. I'm across the street. Oh, I get you, okay. And now they're trying to take my property again. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can't escape them. Uh, what was it, eminent domain again or something? What are they doing? Yeah, I'm not sure what they're trying <laughs> to do. But, um, but they are gobbling up real estate, right? Actually, what they want to do is make it like a Westport type thing where yeah. where there's a lake and a crosswalk that goes over Big Ben at Brentwood. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm just frustrated by the whole ordeal. Right. right. I, I don't blame you. Yeah, that gets to be... I mean, if you drive by there... It's like parking lot from hell, you know? <laughs> and, you know, of course they planted some trees and made it look pretty and everything. But yeah. But you're not a, um, you know, one of their admirers, right? You're no, in, no. On the contrary, you're one of their 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 most vociferous uh, detractors, right? Well, they took my home. <laughs> yeah. you, can't, no. uh, you can't cozy but, up to anybody like that, can you? Well, people are shopping where I used to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Good night. Thanks for your call. Wonderful. Okay, good night. <laughs> Hello. That's funny. Hi. Let's get on some. We'll get as many people on here as possible. Go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Go. What is your show showing in St. Louis? When did my show show in St. Louis? It ought to be on there and there now in St. Louis. Not on right now. 35. Check 35. I well, that's all I can tell you. I don't know. I. Don't, that's all the information I got. You should be. We should be on on 35. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello. Carl. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Uh, I understand that St. Louis is going to be the murder capital of the, of the, of the state. Uh, well, I guess, uh, I don't know. Uh, was it uh, Washington, D.C., I think, was uh, higher on the list at one time. I don't know if we're yeah. going to progress to the first place. Huh? They think St. Louis now is going to be number one. Okay. Yeah, it's so tragic. Get some kind of a trophy or something for that? Yeah, I guess they might build a monument to us eventually. We're going to have to have... Uh, say, a battleground monument, you know, and uh, rededicate some of those monuments downtown from... Uh, we, we got to do something about this drug problem. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Look at the... Uh, I think one solution is to get rid of all the niggers first. Well, we'll have to get rid of you next. Hello? Hi. Doing? Great. Good. Listen, uh, that uh, picture you got on your desk there, did you model that after anyone? Or did uh, you just come up with that out of your mind? I, that was uh, just something I imagined, I think, yeah. Okay, it's, it's uncanny. I'm sitting here with a friend of mine, uh, Greg Wittstein, <laughs> and he is a bellhop, and he looks just like that. He's always <laughs> running around St. Louis in his Corvette, and he's got a, a, a facial expression, looks like a constipated look on his face, just like <laughs> Very funny. Hello? <laughs> Hello, are you there? Yeah, Hep's here. Are you there? How old are you? Six, that's a good year. Okay, we'll give them to a six-year-old. What kind of a day did you have today? Are you a boy or girl? I'm a boy. Okay, what kind of a day did you have today? Good day. A good day. What did you do today? Um, I went bumming. You went what? Bumming. Bumming? Plumbing? What did you say? Hello, oh, Hap. Hi, what did he say he was doing today? Oh, he said he went bumming today. Bumming, that's why I thought he said bumming. <laughs> Isn't on either channel tonight. Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, there's no way I can do anything about it. You know, so the people have informed me. I have to check with them on Monday. Somebody, you know, loused up a button. You know, all it is is a question of not hitting a button, I guess. So oh, that right. somebody but failed to know, hit a button. Mine is, you know, just static. Okay, static. Yeah, it's just static. It's oh, okay. They, they probably didn't hit the right button or something. Oh. Okay, so we'll check with them next week. Okay. Okay, and I want to ask. Um, that needlepoint show? Uh-huh. Is that the reason why you would cut an hour? Yeah, that was the reason. Well, I see why. It's got 
that Mort Hill's producer. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's a program and a producer, so he put it in on a time. So that you can't beat power, you know, can't beat City Hall, right? Right. They got the control of it. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> yeah, I got one more question. Sure. Um, since I wasn't able to see your show earlier, I was wondering if you've heard anything from that Hep Fan Club deal. Uh uh. No, I haven't heard anything about it. I was wondering how the. How the thing went? I yeah. have no idea. I have no idea. That, that's out of my hands. It's, if anybody wants to do anything, that's up to them. Yeah. You know, I'm not involved in it, you know. I just want to, you know, since yeah. I didn't. No, I didn't hear anything. Able to hear maybe I'll hear something I tomorrow night. may have gone to the meeting or uh -huh. Well, whatever. maybe they, maybe you'll hear something tomorrow night. Maybe. Okay. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Hal. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Hello, you're the map. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Uh, I was wondering, you know, about the uh, Dahmer case in Milwaukee. Okay. You know, they were going to, you know, start out by the case by determining if he's crazy or not. <laughs> oh, I mean, I isn't that kind of obvious? Yeah, that's right. You know, who would do those things if yeah. they weren't crazy, right? You got but a good I mean, point. They, they have to go through the whole judicial, judicial process. Yeah, first. well, that's, that's the name of our system. Regardless of how bizarre or heinous our, the, the crimes become, you still got to, you know, give people their, their rights, right? Queer should be shot. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Doing this evening. Good, I'm doing fine. Uh, I was uh, going to tell you about a radio show, uh, a okay. radio program I used to do live on the air, similar to the one you're doing. Oh, okay. What's your name? Uh, my name was Dr. Feedback. Dr. Feedback. Yeah. Where, where, where were you being fed back to? Dr. Feedback? <laughs> Hello, that's a funny one. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Great. Being the famous punk that you are. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, like, do you like when you go like to grocery stores? Do people mob you asking you for autographs <laughs> and stuff? People mob me. Yeah, the guys in the produce corner, you know, they always get me, you know, and throw stuff at me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, no, um, there's nobody that mobs huh? me. Go ahead. Um, do you ever like uh, move the camera? You know, I, every time I watch your show, you're always sitting still. Well, I, uh, you know, if I move around, then people have a hard time focusing in on me. If I start to move around, we'll have to get additional camera people. What I've got is a lockdown camera, okay? Did you anything at the waist down? You know, hello. Hi. That's what I think I'm going to do is fill in the space. Somebody starts uh, talking, I'll, if you just muffle them over, you know, override uh, them, go ahead with the sound. Go, go. Three. Oh, yeah, up in North County. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Hey, you're not just on Channel 35 now. No, well, uh, no, uh, they were talking about St. Louis. They should be in, in the St. Louis proper on, on 35. That's what they're talking about. Just letting them know where else to find you. Okay, very good. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, you know, Hello, Mr. Hep. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, fine. This be Montel Jackson. Hi, Montel. And I tell you, I don't appreciate what that man be saying about getting rid of all the blacks. Nope, we don't. Uh, we don't allow it. Don't make any difference what he says. You know, don't make I, any difference what anybody yeah. says because they can say what they want. They don't get a chance to go beyond uh, a few words, and they're gone. I really was offended by. It. Okay, bye bye. I, I, Hello. Hi. Okay. Pity you, poor you. I say pity you, poor you. The first time you watch the show, I said, pity you, poor you. Go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm a, I watch, <laughs> this is on Channel 6 at our house. Okay. And it's about that guy who called earlier. Okay. He asked that. Um, well, what if you got to take a shit in the middle of the show? Goodbye. Hello. Hi. Somebody's talking, but we're going we're gonna to find out what we're going to talk about. Go ahead. Quick, quick. I don't think people who call in and say anything about uh, anybody's racial, uh, racially, uh, is going to perpetuate anything that's already there. You know, that's my opinion. It's there anyway, and someone saying it isn't going to change anything or no. make anything worse well, well, wait or minute. better. Think, think about it. I mean, these same people that, that you don't want to say these people are lazy, they don't work, and are on welfare. No, you didn't say that. that. They said they didn't like them. I well, mean, uh, but that's the reason why that they... No, they, no, you're saying a lot of things they never got a chance to say, so you're going on about something that uh, 
it wasn't even an issue. That's all I say. Somebody you just said. You don't think that's an issue in a society? I don't think that that's what they said. You're saying a lot of things that no one ever said. Okay, well, maybe that's a good point, but you don't think that's an issue in St. Louis? I think it's an issue throughout the world. You know, Irish are lazy. Germans are a bunch of drunks. Well, uh, I'm not saying that. Germans are uh, power crazy. They're nuts. Uh, you know, go down the line. That's what I'm saying. Everybody's well, got a comment about somebody, right? Well, I mean, I mean, they're definitely entitled to their uh, opinion. Right. Opinions, that's right. So they, if they offend somebody, I cut them off because that's not the name of our game. I, I, I totally agree with you. And my point okay. is, uh, mm -hmm. these same people that do that are, are the same people that, you know, if they were employers or whatever, would discriminate against these people to begin with. Well, what you're saying is that there are there is discrimination out there, and that is not going to be changed by someone saying or not saying something. And that's my opinion. Uh, if they say it, doesn't change the fact. If they don't say it, doesn't change the fact. Okay. Uh, I don't, that's my I'm opinion. Not, you don't understand, right? No, I don't. Okay. Well, I, nothing I can do. I've I've said all I can say. Wait a minute. Well, go, wait, go, go quick. I mean, are you afraid of the issue or what? What? Are you afraid of the issue? No. You what are you trying to do? Bait me? I think it's too controversial. For you. Oh, is that it? Okay, that's your opinion, right? Well, I mean, is it? <laughs> well, I don't want to start a long-winded conversation about something I've given you my opinion on. Well, if you want to say any more about it, go ahead. I think it's, it's a valid uh, topic. I, I think. Well, I think okay. Well, of... as far as I've seen, I've addressed it as best as I could. If you've got any more questions on it, uh, I've answered it as best as I could. If you've got any more statements on it, go ahead. Uh -huh. you, haven't, you keep repeating the same thing, okay? I'll give you. I'll give you time if you got something new to say. Okay. Um, I apparently don't want to talk about it. You're afraid of the issue. Okay, that's your opinion. That is. That's okay. My opinion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, you know, I'm uh, going to go on a long-winded conversation. Hello. Let me do your commercial for you. Decision Support Group. Oh, uh, Decision Support Group. Okay, just a minute. Get your sound up. Go ahead. It's, it's in your hand. Go ahead and put the number up. Okay. Wait a minute. I got it in my hand. I get a chance to do it. Okay. Very good. Decision Support Group. The number. Is the number, but you can call that number and get a free copy of your uh, birth date. Uh, who else has famous birth dates on your same birth date? Mm -hmm. And that's just a little something they do. They also help with, uh, in any company, help put you a system together to run the company and manage the company and computerize the company and so on and so forth. There's a lot of company there. You won't get lonely with all those companies, right? right? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, I, I don't know any more about them, but I can also talk about the Lemp Mansion. Oh, you can. Go ahead. Yes. And the Lemp Mansion is a nice place to dine. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have a reservation normally. Uh, it's currently under construction. They're doing some work down there. Um, it's a place where you can go and have dinner, and and um, it's a mystery dinner, and there's ghosts that whoosh by you and, <laughs> and so forth. Well, and you know, we can't make those claims. We can only hope that a ghost will swish by you, but we can't guarantee a ghost. And it's a complimentary wine when mm -hmm. you go and a nice <laughs> three-course dinner. Have you ever been over there? Yes. Are you calling from there now? No. Okay. Uh, do you want to call from there now? No. I mean, I, mean, I just want to do your commercials tonight. Okay. <laughs> All of my commercials. Yeah. And then we have the Schneidhorst Restaurant mm -hmm. that's on Lindbergh and Clayton Road. Mm -hmm. And they have a Sunday morning brunch from 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. and which has all kinds of goodies set up and have your church group or any organization that you belong to go out there and they're welcome okay. and it's a good place to eat they have a little cafe house that's also a good place to eat and night horse is wonderful Go are you there. out there now nope not there no, either not there. you wish you were there nope how come and we have giannino's pizza okay <laughs> i don't have that number you need that number I need a number here I gotta there's get that the number, number. okay and you can go out there and they have huge salads and huge sandwiches, enough for four or five people to eat. I, I say I go out there and, I mean, they give me one of those salads and, boy, oof. They're big, right? You, big, can't, you can't possibly eat them no. one of those by yourself. And they have what we call the HEP special there, That's where right. you can order one pizza and get another free. Mm -hmm. Just mention I'm HEP special. That's right. Well, listen, I thank you very much for your big help. You're welcome. Okay, see you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, that's a good point. We're going to get... Hi. Oh, we, oops. I'm a big art fan of yours. Oh, a big art fan. How, you know, you were on. mentioning Picasso earlier. Oh, yeah, you like Picasso. Well, yeah, and I was going to say that, you know, you probably sold more paintings than him. He only sold one painting when he was alive. Who, Picasso? Yep. No, not so. You yep. better read it. Read his uh, press releases again. He well, sold a ton of paint. You were thinking of maybe um, Van Gogh. Okay, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, that's who you meant. Okay. 
back on track. Your little choo-choo train is back on track. Go ahead. Quick, quick. Drop dead, dickhead. What's that? Drop dead, dickhead. No. Anyway, let me talk about some of my wonderful uh, people here, okay? The Decisions Support Group. This is uh, a group that you can get all kinds of high-quality training at competitive rates in over 100 different kinds of software. That's a get the right computer system for your needs, plus all the software that fits your computer and your specific need in business. And in your training programs, call for class outline for your particular trainees. Also discover how to make your exi existing programs more effective and provide properly configured components to maximize your investment. I understand that they're going to uh, come in with a new thing as far as uh, young people and uh, teaching them uh, to uh, operate computers and going to have a computer class for young people. That's coming up very soon. That will be fun. During the week, uh, you might want to call 428-4510. Have I got that on there? Yeah, I do. You want to call that number, and you uh, you can give the receptionist your birth date, month, date, and year, and your address, and they will send out a printout to you at no cost uh, to show you what what occurred on that day and uh, who were the people born on the day famous that have accrued in uh, the you know the time of history that you might be interested in finding. Uh, you know who also was uh, shown up in your on your birthday so you can get that all for nothing calls are free you call that number and anybody who wants to get involved in the uh, training program for young people uh, they're going to have this new training program and a new system put together we'll talk about it next week a little bit more because there's so many young people on the uh, on our show that they might be interested in uh, you know getting that together uh, for the young people. Decision support group, call them about your birthday and also hang in there and call them about any kind of business uh, situation that you might want to have. It. Get ready for the big boom that's going to come after this uh, slight recession. There's a little bit of a setback that we've experienced. It's just a tooth missing in the front of the economic system of the United States. That's all. We can have a denture made and we'll be back into business. Right, hopefully. Schneidharst at Lindbergh and Clayton Road. I want to talk about the St. Louis Original Sunday Buffet Brunch. It's $10.95 for adults, $5.95 for children. Okay, since 1956, they put together a brunch, and it's wonderful. It goes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They, they encourage you to have uh, reservations for it because you can get you in, get you out, nice seating. You can have anybody from 2 to 200 people take care of you, church groups, whatever have you, anybody, on the Sunday brunch kind of a thing, right? 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 10.95 adults, 5.95 for children, and we gladly accept the reservation. Standard breakfast fare: eggs, waffles, pancakes, sausage, fried chicken, salads, pastries. That's Schneiderhorst restaurant. Chip beef and cream sauce, sweet breads, cheese grits, chicken noodle casserole, ham and cheese omelet. At where? At Schneiderhorst restaurant. Seafood Alexander, turkey hash, chicken livers with mushrooms, beef noodle casserole, biscuits, pancakes, waffles, banana foster, chocolate mousse, homemade custard. That's at Schneidhart's restaurant. Broccoli salad, marinated, homemade banana bread. Bread pudding, bagels, and cream cheese, donuts, pastries, $10.95 for adults, $5.95 for children. And that is where? And where is they located? Where is, as they say on that program, what is? Okay, where is? Is that Schneidhart's restaurant, Lindbergh and Clayton Road. 1095 for adults, 595 for children. And since 1956, they put this brunch together, and it's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Call up, make reservations, and have a good old time on Sunday. Schneiders, Lindbergh, and Clayton Road. Great place to dine, okay? Mm hmm. Ba ba ba. I get a chance. All the lights are blinking. It's wonderful. We never have a problem with people wanting to call in. Okay, Boatman Super Set talk about the boatman's people wonderful people to do business with the boatman's people grand and wonderful I work down there and I do all kinds of things and I meet everybody and we all have a good time but they won't let me count any money they will let me look at it but uh, I'm not good with figures they say they don't let Carl count anything because he always gets the numbers mixed up so they don't and I do other stuff and I meet people and I talk to people and I joke and have a good time but don't tell my boss that because then they say they should be working more. What are these guys doing? What are these artists doing down there? They're not working hard enough. They're not going around having a good time. That's not their job here. That was it. But I 
get a chance to meet everybody, talk to everybody, and have a good time. Nice bunch of people. Boatman Super Set. If you want to call them up and get on the Boatman Super Set oh, bandwagon, that they have groups that meet all over town and they get involved in trips, all kinds of business uh, things that you want to have personally that you want to take care of. They've got so many advantages that you wouldn't believe, and it's a real benefit for you to, to belong to the Boatman Super Set. Call them, get them to uh, give you the information about the whole Boatman Super Set system, which has been in place for many, many long years. It's an old system. A lot of people are uh, involved in it in years and years. Have a good old time, and you get all the benefits of the Boatman Super Set deal. Call them at Boatman's today and have them send the information out to you. And I'm going to have some more information about some of the things that are coming up to tantalize you and tantalize you. Uh, mystery dinner at the uh, Lent Mansion is the next thing I want to talk about. Uh -huh. Last Thursday of each month, and for this nominal, small amount, a pecune amount, $29.95, dinner price per person, opens at 6.30 with complimentary appetizers and cash bar, and dinner at 7 o'clock. You get there a little early, relax, sit around and talk, enjoy the ambiance. Five-course double entree gourmet dinner with wine. Five course double entree gourmet. You know, this is not just run of the mill, this is special. At the Lemp Mansion, you get the mystery dinner, and what happens is a murder happens unexpectedly. Your wife is killed. No, no, no. Maybe your husband. No, I don't know. But somebody is murdered, and uh, they construct the entire situation, and uh, with little ins and outs and dark passageways and hithers and throughs and furrows, that uh, they come up with a solution of who did what to whom, okay? So the limited seating requires that you make the reservations early. It's early in the month. What you want to do is call up early and say, we've got a party of four or six or whatever group, but there is limited seating. So don't wait till the last of the month to call up and say, oh, I want to get in. We got to Why don't you call early? Last Thursday of the month, right? And I'll give you the number there, 664-8024. 664-8024. And you can call either Pat, Dick, or Paul and they will uh, get you the reservations up for that mystery dinner especially. But you can go to the, man the Lent Mansion at any time to enjoy the, uh, you know, the feeling of the old mansion and the old times and all the old fixtures and fittings. And uh, it's an authentic place to go. Wonderful place to dine in St. Louis. Go there and especially we're going to tout the mystery dinner at the Lent Mansion. Call them. Give it like, one more time. 664-8024. Do it soon. Do it tomorrow. So make sure you get your reservations in, okay? Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi, Hi, how are you doing tonight? Okay, I've called about the Jeffrey Domner guy that killed okay. all those people. Sure. I'm kind of shocked on the whole thing. Uh, he seems pretty sick, doesn't he? Well, I would know. They're, they're, they're looking into it. Evidently, there was a lot of people that ended up getting killed in Germany that they're thinking he was involved in. They mm -hmm. also got the uh, CIA looking into it because it looks like he was selling arms to Iraq. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm from the St. Louis area. Oh, you are? Good. And I have your channel on. I mean, I have you on 08. Oh, you have me on 08? Yeah. Okay, oh, are you up in North St. Louis or something? Well, are you? kind of like, well, I'm from Spanish Lake. Spanish Lake, up, that's north, isn't it? That's a north and, you know, okay, go ahead. I'm on Channel 8 up there. Good, welcome. Are you on uh, United Cable? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. I've been watching you for a long time. Well, great, welcome on board. I have a question. Why sure. Why do you keep switching glasses? Ah, uh, because... When you get old and gray, see how gray I am and old, you know, what happens is you, uh, you get, uh, what, what do you do? You get uh, something sighted. I don't know what you get. Uh, I guess you get more nearsighted as you get older. So the old codgers like myself, they've got these, uh, what do you call those, uh, bifocals? Yeah. And with those very aggravating, I, mean, I hate bifocals because I'm always, you know, I don't know which way to look through the darn thing. So what I do is I buy a set of glasses, a pair of glasses, that I use when I'm up close, when I'm doing artwork, right? So uh, anything within three or four feet is really in good um, focus. So then when I read, I just throw these glasses on, and then they're, they're, everything out in front of me is fine. 
So when I'm not reading and I'm just doing generally you know, all kinds of other things, like trying to see a pretty girl coming down the block a long way downtown, then I put on my long view glasses, okay? That explains it. And then the pretty girl comes up to me and then she puts her head like the old geezer, what are you looking at me for? You know? <laughs> right? But I look anyway. I, I like looking at pretty girls of all ages, right? Okay. Sure. I'll see you later. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> That open up a conversation. Hi. Hi. How's it going, bud? Great. Yeah. Um. I just this is the first time I ever watched this show. Okay. And um, I was just curious, like, how'd you get started in art, and how long have you been doing it? Uh, I get started in art. Yeah, doing art. Whoa, I go way back. Yeah. I was like uh, four and a half years old. I started. I got my first experiences where I was thrilled by art. I think yeah. it goes back to age four. Oh man. So I've I've been at it a long time and enjoyed myself uh -huh. for many many long years. Who, um, who are some of your main influences? Ah, you know, uh, my dad, for one. Uh -huh. He told me to, you know, make things simple. Just get the idea across and don't over, don't elaborate, don't, uh, yeah. don't kill the work. Just get it down with a few strokes and let it alone. Yeah, did you watch that uh, the Bob Ross show? Like uh, yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how crazy he is. Yeah. He's, I yeah. don't. <laughs> I don't know him as crazy. He's sort of a nice, kind, gentle sort of. Sweet yeah. person that paints Seems away. Like a heavy guy. <laughs> yeah. I think he paints all nice and heavy. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's hey, good. Would, yeah. Would you like my burning anus? <laughs> See there. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? I wanted to comment on your uh, painting. Okay. Good. In the Riverfront Times, I mean. Oh, in the Riverfront. Oh, yeah. Andy Warhol. <laughs> yeah, that's your best. I think that's your best work of art that I've ever seen. Oh, okay. Well, I thank you very much. It's very realistic. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a photorealistic kind of thing, but I'm. I made it a little bit cartoon cartoonish too. It's a little bit on the uh, you yeah. know exaggerated side. Well, yeah. That's what artists do. And also, I called Camelwax to see their reaction on what you said about, and um, I got through. I don't know how, but they said you were one big douchebag. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi. Quick. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was a little kid. Hi. Can I complain to you about something Shh. that really really rotten that happened to me the other day? Okay. Sure. Go ahead. 28 years I've been driving. Uh -huh. I've never had a ticket. Never. And last day of the month, I'm going down the road. I live right off this road, mm -hmm. and the speed limit's always 40 miles per hour. Yeah. I'm going down this road, and I'm going 43. <laughs> there's construction. And along the side, all of a sudden, there's a sign that says speed limit 30. Yeah. And there's a cop right past there on a motorcycle. Well, he's got the motorcycle parked in somebody's driveway. Uh -huh. And he's off the side, and he pulls me over. 28 years of driving, I've never had a ticket. I drive on this road all the time. I mean, if it, if he hadn't been there, I wouldn't have gotten that stinking ticket. Yeah, right. And it really irritates me, because yeah. I feel like I'm the one that everybody passes on 40. <laughs> Right. I have three teenagers driving. I set a good example for them. Yeah. They don't have tickets. And here, the last day of the month, he gets me. Yeah. Can you make I've it? I've been beating myself up about this ticket. <laughs> but I think the reason is it was, a, it was unjust. Yeah. I well, you took, proud, you took pride in your driving record, right? You're right. I and mean, I, that's something that belonged to you and you were bragging all these years. And now that's dispelled. You can't say it anymore. No, but it was unfair. I know what I'm just saying too. You've lost something, you know. Yeah, I did lose something. Yeah. Just because I think it was the last day of the month. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Thanks they were making a quota, and you're part of the quota. Yeah. Thanks well, for listening. I, I had this gripe, and I had to get it off my chest. I don't blame you, hon. Thank all you. Right. Thank you, I dear. Good night. Hey, okay, I call your alderman. That's what my friend says. Hello. Oh, gone. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Quick. Fine. We're gonna try to get a whole bunch uh, of callers. Have you heard of the movie Harry and the Hendersons? Ah, uh, you. Uh, 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 Harry and the what? Hendersons. Harry and the Hendersons. Is that the, uh, uh, the Yeti or whatever? Is that is that what it was or what? I don't understand. Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. Was that the uh, sort of like a you know the, the abominable snowman or something? With the Sasquatch. A Sasquatch. Yeah. A Yeti Sasquatch. Do you I don't believe know. in Bigfoot? Uh, do I believe in Bigfoot? No. You don't? No. Why not? Well, I don't know. I have any reason to believe in them. Uh, I've heard all kinds of things. People went to Africa. They saw them over in Africa. They hunted down for years. They thought them got them for sure, and they didn't. They thought they saw the lost ark 
uh, Noah's Ark up in the, in the mountains. They went after they didn't come back with anything. They're going to have, uh, you know, information on these landing sites with swirled wheat, and they never came up with anything. Uh, there's, I don't know, I can't explain it. There may be something there, but um, yeah. I don't know. I just, I just like to have a piece of the spacecraft. But I was thinking that the other day. Somebody lands, and uh, the spacecraft blows up, and a part falls off, and a guy goes out and picks it up. And uh, he calls the Pentagon or something, and some guys, two guys in gray suits come out, pick the part up, and they never see him again. And uh, nobody knows from nothing, right? So I don't know. It's incredible that all these stories abound, but there never seems to be, they never catch one. You know, they never bring one back alive. We don't have a, uh, a outer space person that we've got as an example or something. If they have, it's probably packed away in a um, freezer in the Pentagon somewhere, right? Okay, that's my comment. Okay, okay. Um, and also, yeah. you know, a couple of callers ago, somebody asked you, it's kind of gross what they asked you, you know, what don't, do you Don't think? ask them. If it's gross, don't ask it. Oh, no, I'm just saying what somebody, I'm not going to repeat it or anything. Okay. What do you do when you have to go to the bathroom? I, it's, it's gerbil. I didn't hear what you say. Say it again. What do you do when you have to go to the bathroom? I just can't, can't, I just can't make it out. Hello? Hi, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you doing? Great. I uh, heard you talking to that uh, lady who wanted to be a school teacher for uh, Merrimack. Yeah, from Merrimack College. Yeah, yeah. she got me thinking. Uh, she asked you if you ever heard of uh, Danzig or Megadeth. I was wondering if you ever heard of Slayer or King Diamond. Nothing rings a bell. I don't know, what are they? They're actors. They're actors? They're thrash bands. They're flash bands. Yeah. Metal. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I don't. Obviously, I don't know what it is. I mean, um, they're groups. Like they're groups. Oh, they're groups. Yeah. Are they from this? From St. Louis? No. No, they're national. Yeah. The international. Yeah. Well, are you taken and smitten by these people or something? You think they're great? Or yeah, I can't believe you never heard of them before. Well, that's not hard to believe if you ever watch me long enough. I'm not really into anything. Uh, and that's the know, reason I'm uh, the reason I'm here is because people inform me of things. These are big names, right? Yeah. These are like high flyers, yeah, people King of the Diamond. future, huh? King Diamond. King Diamond. Yeah. Okay. Well, player. Not, well, you know, I just I I listen to classical music, so if they come up on the classical music charts, I probably hear them sometime. Yeah, they might. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Hello, you know me? Yeah. Hello. I read an article in the paper about this priest. And this priest actually, uh, well, he's allegedly he raped some women, but uh, I mean, it's terrible that these women put trust in him, and he he's admitted to this. And I was wondering what's like the uh, the heat wave and everything, if this like affects like crime and stuff like that. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. I heard somebody. I don't know about uh, crime necessarily. I think I, I guess the the heat does uh, you know agitate. I guess. Somebody just told me tonight uh, they work in a uh, supermarket and they had practically no customers today, I think because of the high temperatures, 102. I think maybe at night it might affect uh, more than just a day, you know. Like just the heat itself is not, I don't think, is, a, is a, the, while the, the highest temperatures are being experienced, that's not when the crime occurs. Yeah, well, I think it's during periods of time of high temperature at night, then I think the the feeling of agitation and so on carries over into the to the night, and there's you know people are more yeah, well, inclined or apt to or whatever to get involved in uh, violence and well, in the paper he um with admitting to this uh with with the rape and everything, uh, he also admitted to like butt fucking. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Great. Uh, I was wondering if you knew anything about the situation in Kuwait and what was going on. I caught the tail end of the news tonight, and I didn't. I didn't see. Said something about might be sending some more, uh, like bombing, bombing again or something. Oh well, I, yeah, that's what I heard. But I don't. They're not about to, as far as I can see. They're not going to do just, that. Well, I don't say that they're not. But I mean, the president hasn't said that it's imminent. Like, give you ten hours or else. They put a deadline down and it's passed. Yeah. They say like, if you don't do anything by this time, uh, then anything might happen. But that that doesn't sound like that seems sort of wishy-washy to me. Yeah. And they uh -huh. claim that they have given all the information that they can give. Yeah. Each time they come up with some more after they've given all they can give. Yeah, so true. it's a question of um, how long they're going to take it. True. Okay? You butt fucking. Hello? Hello? 
Hello? Uh, yeah, do you think uh, Pee Wee Herman should go to jail for waxing the dolphin? Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Hi. Good. Um, I was wondering if me and a friend of mine were thinking about getting into cable access, and we just wanted to know how you yourself oh, got no, started. No, 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 no. I think that's a boring subject. Uh, uh, go back to when I started. Good grief. I've said that story so many times that, uh, you know, I don't want to bore people anymore with that. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm a unique case. I don't know about all these other possibilities and everything that I could advise. If you guess you go to a, a, a you know, a, a school or something, they could tell you. I mean, they know across the board what, what's what. See, I, I don't know across the board. So I wouldn't be give, able to give you anything except how I did it. And then uh, people get tired of that, okay? Yeah, so that I, I decline on that reason. But I've said it so many times that I, I'm sorry. Does it cost a lot of money to run your show each week? Cost me a lot of money, I'll tell you that, okay? I'll, I'll leave it at that, okay? Hello, you know. <laughs> Hello, Carl. Hi. Um, this, I'm being very serious. We saw a Bigfoot once. You did? We were camping um, in Washington State. Uh huh, that's generally where they have them, right? Uh, well, I, I, I didn't know at the time. Uh huh. But we, first we heard this sound, and it sounded like uh, someone was injured in pain. Uh huh. And. And then uh, you have to remember this was night. Yeah, right. I'll try to remember that. Go and ahead. we had these Coleman lanterns. Uh huh. And we saw it, and at first it looked, we thought it was a bear, which <laughs> you know scared the hell out of us. Yeah, right. You know. Yeah. And um, we started heading back towards the car. Uh huh. And but it was standing erect, mm -hmm. you know, on its hind legs. Not when it, if you've ever seen a bear, they they stand like hunched over and they shuffle, mm -hmm. but this wasn't like that at all. This was like it, you, you or I would stand. Okay. Straight. Okay. And um, it came out from between two trees. Okay. And we got the picture. You saw him, right? Oh, we were no farther than 15 feet away. Okay. Did he look like all the drawings and everything that they all said? It. Look, well, that it looked like bear fur. Like what? Like uh, it had hair like a bear. Okay. Very coarse. Uh huh. But um, it was uh, like, how tall was it? Pardon me. How tall was it? And like animal fur, not like human hair. Okay. And we, I. What happened then? Dark. Finally, what happened finally? Well, what happened was it. Car. You started heading towards the car. Go ahead. And we got into the car no. and 20 minutes. Waited for 20 minutes in the car. Pardon me? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm repeating. Okay, um, uh -huh. and we we didn't see or hear anything else. Uh, so you got out of the car we, yeah. and he was gone. He, it was gone, but okay. we... Footprints. Uh -huh. And we went <clears throat> and... We were, we were in a we were in campgrounds. It wasn't a uh, state park. Uh -huh. And the man who owned the campgrounds came out and took plaster casts, and I have one. Okay, good. And Did you turn it over to the CIA or anybody like that? Well, what I was going to say was I was wondering if, if maybe you would like to have it to display on your show one night. Okay, bring it on over. Now, where should I bring it? Because um, it's, I mean, it, it weighs about 25 pounds. Otherwise, well, I would mail it to you if you would yeah. promise to mail it back. But well, it wouldn't really mean anything to anybody because anybody could form up a foot, right? I mean, if we have your word that this is a plaster cast. What we need... No, no, no. It has... It, not only that, there's a letter. There's a letter in it? From... The, there is a society for Bigfoot watchers. Oh, I and see. And they authenticate... What we need... Yeah, but what we don't need is a, is a lot of people who authenticate stuff. But we need one of those Bigfoots right here in our studio... And I guarantee you, we would uh, put him on. Okay? Uh -huh. I'm not joking. I'm just saying we need, we need something that uh, you know, is going to be more specific than just a plaster cast. Well, also, actually, what I have you're... a picture. I I have a picture of his pig. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I was wondering where he's going. Hi. Hey, I don't want to be cruel and mean to people, but I guess sometimes I should be cruel and mean to people, right? Maybe I don't know. That's not me. Nah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, I was wondering if um, if your uh, your fan club had reported in tonight. I heard there was going to be a 
Nope, I didn't hear anything. They haven't heard anything. Gosh, well, yeah. you know, they were supposed to meet tonight, so you know, maybe yeah. they could call in and make a report. Okay, we'll, we'll wait for them. Oh. Okay, bye-bye. How many people? Hello. Hey, Hep, how's it going? Hi, great. Oh, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Oh, so uh, did you know that that Boatman superset thing is still on it in front of your thing? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, and I fucked your wife last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ta -da -da. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. You got a chippers on. Hi. <laughs> hey, I was calling about what you said about Germans. Yeah. What did I say about Germans? I give an example of what pe some people say about German people. Against oh, what other people, what, against what other people say about Irish people. Against what other people say about black people. Are you German? Yeah. Are you drunk? Am I a drunk? Yeah. Well, I've known to have been, you know, drunk in times in my life. You know, does that make me a drunk? No, I just wasn't mm, aware that. I was drunk, yeah. Uh -huh. I wasn't aware that Germans were called drunks. Drunks? Yeah. They're not heavy drinkers? No, I, I mean, I, I think the, the Russians got a, a big reputation as far as being a hard liquor and vodka drinkers. That's an established fact. And the Germans are huge consumers of beer, right? There's a lot of, lot of alcoholism in uh, the German uh, people. There's a lot of alcoholism in the, uh, the Irish people, and so forth and so forth. Uh, okay, yes, uh, go right. ahead and do what you want to do. I mean, uh, you're leading to something. Uh, someplace I've made a mistake, right? Well, no, I, I okay. just wasn't aware that meant. I was aware that Germans... <laughs>